Thank you very much, and uh, can I begin by acknowledging my parliamentary colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Can I say once again, it is indeed good to be with you here tonight. And it is good to see your community once again coming together to stand up for the human rights which both Senator Patrick, Zoe Bettison and Mr Steve Jorganis just spoke about a few moments ago. When I was first elected to Parliament in 2007, one of the first communities that I got to know well was your very community. And over the years I've had many of them come into my office for assistance on a whole range of matters, but most particularly because of their concern about what was happening in your own homelands. In 2009, when Rabia Kadir came to Australia, I was one of the few politicians who met with her. And I listened to what she had to say and her campaign, and it inspired me as well to stand up and speak up for your rights, the rights of your people, in the parliament. And over the years, I have done that on many occasions, including very recently in a motion in the House of Representatives on this very issue. In 2018, when Rabia Kadir again came to Australia, and your community came to Parliament House in Canberra in large numbers, and stood in the front of Parliament House on the lawns, standing up and hoping to get attention. I think I was probably the only and maybe one of the very few politicians who made the effort to go out in front of Parliament House and speak to the people of your community and tell them that I would go back inside Parliament House and again raise their concerns on the floor of Parliament, which I did. And I did that because over the years, not only have I spoken to your people firsthand and listened to their pleas for help about their concerns for family members being left back home and the treatment they were getting, but also because I've met with other international speakers who have done a lot of research into what is going on in your homelands and they presented me with additional material which was um, supportive of the claims that were being made. And as other speakers have made here tonight, our role now is to continue to stand up for those human rights, and we will, as I do, not only for your community, but for all others where human rights are in any way being uh, repressed and people are being pushed into hardship and persecution because of them. And so I say to you here tonight, you need to keep up also your communities. I guess, uh, working together right across Australia, as you do. And I, re I recall when Rubia came out here on the last occasion, um, a good friend of um, uh, Mr Jorganis and myself, uh, Michael Danby, had left the parliament. And Rubia spoke very, how can I say, um, glowingly about her friendship with Michael Danby because of the fact that he also was one of the few members of parliament who, in the early days, had uh, been, been prepared to get inside the parliament and speak up for your community. We will continue to do that. Um, obviously, um, it, it will require the support of other members of parliament. And um, I'm hoping that when we go back, um, if not in the next couple of weeks, but whenever the opportunity arises, we will continue to raise this. And finally, I would just want to finish with this. When I um, first spoke in parliament about the plight of your community. I had a journalist contact me, a journalist from the Australian, and said to me, you're one of the few people that has been speaking up for the Uyghur people in Australia. Um, and I said, yes, that is, that is true. And not many journalists want to run with the story at all. And in the last four or five years, I have noticed that there has been a lot more coverage of what is happening in your homeland than ever before. That means that people are starting to listen. That is a good thing, and that should hopefully give us all the momentum to keep up the fight. Thank you very much.